Hello everybody and welcome back. For today's video we're continuing with our back to the basics and we are continuing with the iron cross and now we're going to look at how it performs on exceptional rolls. 15 rolls without a 7, 30 rolls without a 7, 45 and 60. Now here's the thing, that doesn't sound like a lot of rolls, especially the 15 rolls without a 7, but depending on the table you're at, 15 rolls without a 7 is probably somewhere between a 10 to 15 minute roll, 10 to 15 minute hand. That is not that frequent. We do see them. I saw two of them tonight while I was working. Uh, for those of you guys that are wondering, it's, it's 5 in the morning right now as I film. Um, so I did see a couple of them. Uh, the 30 rolls without a 7, now you're probably looking at between 25 to 35 minutes, maybe even up to 40, to, again, depending on the table and the players, right? Things start to slow down as the rolls get longer and longer and longer because you have more people pressing, more people betting, all kinds of weird stuff, you know, pressing their hard ways, parlaying this, par press that, hop this, you start getting some strange stuff. And you also start getting some bets that are pressing up. And generally, you're going to have at least one rookie at the table that is following someone else's footsteps. So they're trying to press, but they don't know what they're doing and it slows things down. Right? It sounds like you should be able to get a whole ton of rolls. But remember that the world record roll that is four and a half, just under four and a half hours long was only 150 something rolls of the dice. That was it. 150 something rolls of the dice. That means it took almost an hour and a half for every 50 rolls. So. You know, 45 rolls without a 7, you're probably touching on an hour already. Hour, possibly even longer or shorter, depends on the players, the table, side bets, and all kinds of other weird bets, and the dealers. Um, and then when you get to 60 rolls without a 7, yeah, that's, that's a long, that's, that's at least an hour, if not an hour and a half to an hour and 40 minutes. So that's exceptionally rare. I actually have not seen a roll like that in over a year. I have seen an hour long roll, so I saw probably about a 40 to 45 rolls of the dice without a 7 uh, not too long ago. But that's, again, pretty rare. So let's take a look. And you, know, you guys noticed that I set up two iron crosses. Standard iron crosses, we're operating under a $10 table, just like the first video, where we have three units each on the 5, 6, and 8, and then we have two units, the table minimum in the field. Why do I have two iron crosses set up? Because we have one that is a classic iron cross, which means that they are not going to press. They're just going to collect, 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 collect. And then we have another one that is going to do the expanding iron cross, where we're going to press one unit at first, and then eventually mid-press as these numbers hit. And as the field hits over here, we're going to use it to expand out the iron cross to other numbers. And then from there, we'll press those up as well until we get to the green, and then we will mid-press, and we'll just keep on going. And we will, at that point, once we've expanded out, we're going to go ahead and drop the field bet. We'll shift to, say, a $5 horn high 12, because that's what I like to do, although you could also do a $4 horn bet, or you could do nothing, and we'll see how it goes from there. Now remember, this is going off the st statistical likelihood rolls, and you're really pushing for the non-statistical rolls when you're playing most craps games. But this gives you a good idea of how this would work over a long period of time. So starting out, we're going to start out with 15 rolls without a 7. So we'll start with the 2, and then we'll just move on up from there. Now the 2 and the 12 each have basically a statistically they're going to come half a time. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do zero times for the two and I'm going to do, do one time for the 12. And the reason I'm doing that is because the two pays double and the 12 most places is going to pay triple. I know this says double, but I'm going to cheat it as triple. So if I'm only going to do one hit on between the two, I might as well do the one that's going to pay the most. Right? So we're going to start out with the two, the two statistically, uh, in this particular example, will roll zero times, so nobody's going to get paid or lose anything. Now we shift over to the three. The three statistically is going to come once. So the very first player is not doing anything, so they just collect their $10. The other player uses it to expand out, so they get a nine, because typically you're going to go with the nine first, and then you're going to go with the other two numbers. So now we've got a four rolling. 
Now, the 4 and the 10 statistically come one and a half times in this scenario. So we're going to do one time with the 4 and two times with the 10. So the 4 comes, they get paid, same bet. The 4 comes, they get paid, say, you know what? Give me a 4. So that's the one time. So now we're going to go to the 5. So when the 5 rolls, and the 5 is going to come statistically two times. Five rolls, this player is going to make $11 each time it hits. 21 here, but they have to replace their $10 that lost. So they're going to make $11, which means the five comes twice, they're going to make $22. Okay, We're going to go ahead and do 27 for five. That player is done. Now this player loses their field. To bring it back, that means they're only getting paid $11. They press it up once. They bank the rest. The second time it hits, they're going to get paid $28. Press it up once. Bring back their field. Bank the rest. So that's the two times that hits. So now we get to the six and eight. Now the six and eight are going to come two and a half times each. So we're going to do two times and three times. Now. For this player, it's the same scenario. They're banking $11 each time. So it's going to come twice in our scenario. So we're going to go ahead and set a 22. We're going to do 27 for 5. Then we go to the player that is expanding out and or pressing. So they're going to make 21. So they're going to make 11 after replacing their field. Press it up one unit. Bank $5 the first time. The second time, bring back their field, bank the rest. They go up to 30. Now we go to the 8. And since we only did two times for the 6, for the 8 we'll do three times. So the first player, again, is only banking $11 each time. So this time they're going to bank $33. We're going to do 35 for 2. That way I don't have to keep making change over and over and over again. So this player. So the first time, Again, they're going to make $11 because they're bringing back that bet. They're bringing back their field bet. Press it up. One unit. Bank $5. Next time around, get their field bet back. Bank the rest. Now, the third time around, they'll throw in $2. And they'll bring their field bet back. So that's three hits. I'll just leave that for now. So now we move on to the 9. So when the 9 rolls, the 9 is going to come two times under our scenario. So this player is going to bank $20 twice. Or $20 total. Now this player, first off, the field will roll the first time and they will expand themselves out to the 10 because that's the only thing they're missing. So that's the first hit. Also, this 9 is going to hit. They're going to get paid 15 for 1. They're going to press it up. And there we go. The second time it hits, now at this point, this player is probably going to go ahead and take their, uh, take their field bet out of the equation. And like I said, we're going to go ahead and do a $5 horn high 12. Okay. Now, the second time around, when it hits, this is going to pay 21. We're going to pay 26 for 5. Go up to 30. Replace our horn high 12. And bank the rest. So now we move on to the 10. Now, since the 4 only, only hit once in this scenario, the 10 is going to hit twice. This player is just going to get paid in the field twice. So we'll give 25 for 5. That's their $20. Now, this player, remember, they have to replace their horn high 12 as well. So we're going to say it's not a buy yet. We'll say it's a buy at a quarter. Okay. So they're going to replace their horn high 12, press it up a unit, bank the rest. The, the next time it hits, the second time it hits, it's going to pay $27. So we're going to go ahead and pay 27 press it up to a quarter, Replace the horn high 12, 
and they are done. So now we move on to the 11. The 11 is going to come one time. This player is going to make $10. The Horn High 12 player is going to make $11. We'll go ahead and do 15 for 4. And now the 12. And since the 2 did not roll under this scenario, the 12 will roll. We're going to pay triple, so they're going to make 30 bucks. And do 50 for 20 to make it easier. And now we look at the final player. Horn high 12. That means they get paid $57. So, under this scenario, the player that's doing the classic Iron Cross, where they're just same betting, same betting, same betting, over and over and over again, will have in the rail $177 after 15 rolls without a 7, which is about a 10 to 15 minute hand. $177. The player that is expanding it out is going to have $174. So they are $3 less. So it does look like the, the classic on cross of same bet, same bet, same bet is uh, looking superior. But look at the table. Look at the table. This player has $61 in action. The other player, however, has 10, 35, 65. They've got 42 here, which puts them at 107. They have $157 in action. Oh, I'm sorry, $162 in action. $162 in action versus $61 in action. That means they have $101 more than the classic Iron Cross player. They could take their money down, walk away with it. So next we're going to move on to the next 15 rolls without a 7 and see how these continue to perform. Okay, let's take a look at the next 15 rolls. So we'll start with the two. So this time around, now the two is going to roll once. The 12 is not going to roll at all because statistically they're going to roll one time each within the 30 rolls. Since the 12 has already rolled, it's not going to roll again. So the two will roll this time, which means this player is going to get paid double. They're going to make their $20. Where, and the other player is going to make $26 off of their horn high 12. So they get paid 26 bucks. Done. Easy. Simple. So let's move on to the three. So the three is going to roll two times total statistically. So it's going to add a roll to it. It's already rolled once. So they're going to get paid another $10. The other player is going to get paid $11. And we're done. Moving on to the four. The four is going to add two rolls to it. Since it only rolled one time before, it's going to roll two times this time, whereas the ten is only going to roll once this time because it rolled two times last time. So when the four rolls, the four hitting twice, this player is going to get paid twice. So we're going to go ahead and give them, you know what, we're going to go ahead and give them 100 for 80. They get, they get paid $20. And they're done. Now this player the first time around, they're going to press it up, bring back their horn high, uh, horn high 12, collect the rest. The second time around, we're going to pay them 30 for 3. They're going to go to a quarter, replace their horn high 12, bank the rest. And now the 4 is done. So now moving on to the five. The five is going to roll two additional times. As we already know, this player right here is going to make $11 each time. So they're going to make $22. We're going to give them 27 for five, and they are complete. So now let's look at the next player. So the next player is going to get paid 35. They'll go to 35. 
and they will replace their, actually, you know what I'm going to do with the red. They will replace their horn height 12. The second time around, they're going to throw in a dollar, take this to 50, replace their horn height 12, collect the rest. We are done. So the 6 is going to roll 3 more times because it only rolled twice under the old scenario. Whereas the 8 is only going to roll 2 more times because it had already rolled 3 times. Because they're each statistically going to come 5 times each. So, what did I say? 3 more times. Which means this player is going to get paid $11 3 times for 33 bucks. So we'll go ahead and do 35 for actually, we're going to do 50 for 17. And that player's done. Now, the other player the first time it hits, they're going to go to 42, bank that, bring back their horn high 12. The next time it hits, the second time, they're going to go to 60, replace their horn high 12. The next time it hits, the third time, which is technically the fifth time since the roll began. They're going to press up to 90, bank that, bank that, bring the horn high 12 back. Make some quick change, if I can stop fumble fingering, Jesus. So now we go to the 8, and we already said the 8's going to roll two more times, which means this player is going to make $22. because they have to bring their field back each time. They made 11 bucks. This player, the first time, bring it up to 60, place the horn high 12, good to go. Second time around, bring it up to 90, place the horn high 12, and they are done. And that completes the eight. Okay. I don't even know why I have this sitting here. We're going, since we're going over statistical likelihoods, we're not worrying about uh, where the puck is. And of course, yes, that's going to make a small bit of difference as you've got winners because your bets are probably not working on come-out rolls and things along those lines. Um, although some people do work on come-out rolls. We've had a lot of that happen lately, actually. So now we move on to the nine. So the nine's going to roll two additional times, which means this player that makes $10 each time is going to make 20 bucks. We will give them 100 for 80 So now we've got two times for this player. So the first time they go to 35, bring back their horn high 12. Second time around they throw in a dollar, go to 50, bring back their horn high 12, and they're done. Now we move on to the 10. As we said, the 10 is only going to roll once. It's going to roll one time. They make $10, we'll give them 25 for 15. This player is going to do going to throw in six dollars. Six dollars because they throw in a dollar big, they press up, and they bring their horn high 12 back. All right, moving on to the 11. The 11 is going to roll once, one whopping whole time. So this player makes their ten dollars. That's it. Horn high 12 player makes their eleven dollars. And that's it. Now we move on to the 12, and like we said, the 12 will not roll under this scenario. So let's see where we are at. Now, 30 rolls without a 7, so we're looking at approximately, like I said, 25 to 35 minute hand. This is statistical likelihood. Now, if Chances are, under this scenario, the statistics have broken somewhat. Maybe one number rolled maybe two additional times than it normally would have, and a couple other numbers rolled one less time each or something along those lines. Uh, but over a long period of time, statistics tend to smooth out. So this gives you a pretty good idea of how it will perform, how these will perform in a 25 to 35 minute hand. And what we have is the classic iron cross player that is just same betting all the time. This player has been rolling for 30 minutes, and they have 300 and $44. Plus, 
they still have their $61 in action. So 344 with 61 in action. That means they have $405 total that is theirs if they took everything down and decided to call it a night and go home. Now the player that expands it out and then presses, mid presses, has $499. $499 in their bankroll, sitting in their rail. Now what do they have in action? Let's take a look. 25, 75. Right here we have 180. Okay, these are both 90. 180 plus your 75. You're looking at 255 plus another 100. So they have $355 in action. That means they have $854 total between what they have in action and what they have in their rail that they have made as profit. So if they took, if both players took everything down, the player that expands it out and uh, and mid presses would have $854. The player that is just same bet, same bet, same bet over and over would have $405. So there you go. There is a comparison up to the 30 rolls without a 7. So again, it all, it all depends on what you were shooting for as far as um, what strategy you're going to use and how you're going to play it out. So moving on, we're going to go to the next 15 rolls which will be in another video. That will be in the next video, the, the next 15, going to 45 rolls and going to 60 rolls will be in the next video, the third video for this. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I hope you guys find this interesting, illuminating, enlightening, or at least just plain fun. We appreciate every single one of you guys, and we will catch you next time. Bye now. Thank you, everybody, for watching today's video. And as promised, a little bit more detail on things that we are working on. So. Again, we want, to, uh, we want to continue trying to expand the channel. We're really hoping to be, add, to be able to add roulette as soon as possible. And then some video kino, video slots, stuff along those lines. Um, unfortunately, it ate up almost all of our cash, um, paying off all of our bills during the month of January, January while we were down. And uh, now that the holidays have ended, um, YouTube's uh, payouts have dropped significantly. So. Uh, we're kind of treading water here uh, uh, as far as all that goes. Do have a lot of things we want to add, though. Not just those, those things, those, those additional games, and hopefully some carnival games and such, such like that, but the live streams. The biggest problem right now with the live streams is with three jobs combined between the two of us, four if I include the, the 20 to 30 hours a week I'm putting into the YouTube channel. Um, it's very, very difficult for me to have a day and time that I can commit to doing the live stream every single week because we also have our, our very young child to, to take care of. But I'm trying to figure that out. I'm, I'm thinking it's probably going to end up being on, on Monday nights or Tuesday afternoons or possibly both. I intend to do at least one live stream exclusively for our patrons and then another one on the YouTube channel. So possibly both, both days. Um, we also have a few other things that, that we really want to attempt to move forward on. I'm just running into to either time or skill set issues. I do want to eventually have a, a website going for us. Um, I did used to program websites a long, over a decade ago. A lot of things have changed and I just don't have that time. Um, and uh, not a whole lot of knowledge on the current state of, of um, Building websites, hosting site, you know what what sites can host, and and uh, uh, how to build up, you know the e-commerce stuff. So if anybody has any skill sets along those lines and would like to answer some questions uh, or just help us out, shoot us an email, sincitylivinglv at gmail .com. Um, Also, I really hope to be able to start adding some some uh, fairly ex some exclusive stuff from Sin City Living, uh, logoed shirts, hats. I'm looking to get uh, custom dice made, even custom, custom layouts made, although those would be pretty expensive. Um, but I know zero about e-commerce and drop shipping and uh, anything along those lines. So if you have any skill or knowledge in that area, please email me. Uh, I, would, I would love to ask you some questions and uh, see, if, uh, see if you can answer, answer a few to help me figure out how to get that going. Um, same thing with uh, with designing our logos. You know, I, I I had the logo had some logos designed, very very small logos, unfortunately, not big enough to blow up to put on T-shirts and stuff like that. And again, I know next to nothing. Not next to I know nothing about 
um, logo design, graphic design, any kind of websites that could that could do it. Um, I, I literally know nothing. So if you have any skill or knowledge in that area also, please email me, and you're willing to ask, answer some questions, please email me and, uh, and let me know. I, uh, uh, I'll admit I don't even know where to start as far as asking some questions, but I'm sure I'll, I'll ask a few and that'll trigger a few more, so on and so forth. Um, so, yeah, there's that. And, and uh, of course, we do hope to continue to improve our AV setup, but I am an AV moron. So also right there, if you have any skill sets or knowledge in that area, please email me and, and are willing to answer some questions. Please email me and, uh, and let me know. We would love the help. Uh, otherwise, again, thank you everybody for watching and we're very excited to continue bringing you our videos. Bye now.